Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode in this series. In this episode, we'll be finishing off with finishers. Before we get started, I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. This project will be available on Patreon, minus the paid assets of course. So here we are back in our scene and what we're going to do is we're going to create a uh, paired animation between these two. Now obviously this is not um, possible without the melee module, which is great because you know we already used the melee module in the last video and what we're going to do is a simple takedown now um, there's a couple of ways this can be done the problem is always going to be placement um, and quite frankly um, you know we'll need to do some camera trickery now luckily you know um, major games do this as well um, the loss of us for example uses a lot of camera trickery and actual teleportation of characters in order to make finishes work so i'm not going to pretend we're going to do it to that good level um, but we're going to use similar tricks um, in order to make sure that um, you know we're kind of missing some placement parts and we're not really seeing that just to make it look good um, so yeah we'll be using similar tricks now, like I said, we'll be using the melee uh, module for this. Uh, so we need some clips um, and that's not that easy because there's not a lot of these types of clips for pistols and, um, you know, guns in general. Uh, most are obviously just for uh, swords and things like that. And it makes a lot of sense because a lot of shooting games don't really have things like this. So, um, you know, we have the point blank, which is really short paired animation. And I'll link the, uh, the asset in the description, um, this one, um, it's a gun, uh, gun fu pack and honestly it's, uh, it's definitely one of, the, uh, one of the better ones. It's basically just a lot of gun kata stuff, uh, really cool. Um, you know we have like some crazy takedowns like these uh, which looks incredible, really cool. Um, often the problem with stuff like this is that obviously um, it needs a bit of place um, and you know it needs a bit of space and it needs space on this part as well so if you're close to a wall it's just going to be clipping through the wall things like that um, it's not always that easy that's why we're going to go for the simple one here um, which is a really simple point blank execution um, and yeah that's pretty much it so um, we'll be setting that up what I'll do is I'll duplicate um, these two uh, clips and just like with the melee, I'm going to drag them into our melee folder. Uh, there we go. And then we'll create some clips. So um, melee clip. Um, we're going to uh, turn on um, uninterruptible invincible. Now this has no effect on getting shot whatsoever. It only has effect on the melee module. Um, but we need to make sure this doesn't get interrupted because you know it'll create a mess really. Um, so uh, we'll drag in the attacker first. Um, his attack is turned off because you know it's it's not an attack um, and yeah we'll need to make sure that this is turned off um, there we go uh, extract root motion quite important um, so um, yeah looping needs to be turned off as well apologies for that um, but yeah make sure you know um, XZ uh, root transform is toggled off so, um, and that's pretty much it. Obviously you can ha uh, add sound effects, all of those things. Then we're going to rename this and we'll just do this one, zero one, um, zero one attacker. And that way you can have multiple, you know, and uh, just have multiple clips, um, multiple takedowns makes it cool if you have a couple. And we'll do victim for this one. Um, so yeah, you need to make sure duplicate is done here. Um, and then we'll drag in the victim. There we go. Um, both, uh, because the, the clips are a bit short, I'm going to do 0 0.1 for everything. Um, just to um, make sure the blending is not too big. Uh, there we go. Cool. Now, uh, the problem is, is how are we going to make sure that placement, everything is correct? Um, you know, this NPC has a behavior. How are we going to make sure it doesn't um, interfere with his behavior? Um, and basically it means that we're going to be doing pretty much everything through behavior. 
So the behavior graph will basically dictate pretty much everything we're going to do here, because um, it's actually going to be on the NPC's end. And the reason for that is that we have control over what our player is doing, um, because we input ourselves, but because this is AI controlled, um, you know, you have a bit less control over that. So it's it makes more sense to control everything to the behavior graph rather than really through the player. Now we do need a button for this. Um, and what is this on start again? I kind of forgot. Oh, okay, it's just that he draws something. Cool. Um, so we have on key down um, X. Um, we can do a hold here. So we can do a trigger. Um, hold. Uh, on key hold um, and then we can do uh, X as well uh, game time and it's going to execute on timeout now um, you want to make sure that um, you know this doesn't uh, <laughs> that basically it doesn't uh, you know do this and uh, one of the ways to do this is to by actually changing this one so um, instead of uh, on key uh, down, we're going to do on key, uh, key up. So basically once we let go of X, and we'll try that out of course, we're going to try this out because it might be wrong, but to me this logic makes a lot of sense. Um, 0 0.25, um, we'll need some conditions. And basically what I want to do is um, just like in, it's not the same, don't get me wrong, but just like in Splinter Cell, you have a bit of a meter burn, uh, building up to order to do these executions. Otherwise it's, it becomes a bit too easy in my opinion. Um, so we have our player, um, we have some uh, stats and things here. So let's go to preferences, let's go to stats, let's go to attributes, and we'll add a new one. We'll call this um, execute something like that um, X like this um, we'll need a stat we'll just call that execution we don't need short names things like that um, we'll need a a um, formula as well and then we're just going to do a new one um, there we go formula um, and we'll call this execution there we go. We'll drag that in. Um, base value, for, we'll just do uh, 100. And um, current value is 100 as well. We start off with 100. That way we can do it. And we can do it twice or something like that. Or, or once. It doesn't really matter. So um, we have the execute button. Uh, we have the execute attribute now. And that will be required in order to do this. So um execute uh no attribute sorry <laughs> um execute is greater or equal to 100 so it needs to be 100 exactly or yeah that's fine um then the actions um, and we'll, we'll think of this whole key down, uh, hold key, uh, we'll have a look at that. Um, and then uh, we're going to do, um, oh, we'll need to do the clip and basically it will be based on uh, distance. Um, so, you know, it becomes a bit uh, trickier already. So we need to do um, tag, uh, nearest with tag. There we go. Um, we can do a local variable on the player for this. We don't need to do a global variable for this actually. So we can just do player, um, we'll do a local variable. And we'll do a temp for the target. There we go. Uh, temp. And um, here it's, um, you know, will require a, uh, you know, a distance to actually uh, take place. So uh, temp origin radius. So let's do two, um, might be a bit much. I don't know, we'll try it out. And then the tag name, and I'm not sure if we gave them tag names. 
Um, yeah, they do. They have to tag enemy, so that's perfect. Um, enemy, there we go. Um, gather, and then... Um, wait. 0 0.01. Really short, and then uh, just to make sure this happens first, just to be absolutely sure. Um, temp. Now an easy way to do this is to actually simply have um, the object compare itself in the behavior graph. So we actually do need um, a global variable. So apologies for that. Let's just switch it up. This needs to be global. And we'll just give it the same name. Temp is fine. Combat. There we go. Temp. Cool. Um, so global variable temp, um, and let's make this a bit shorter. Two is maybe a bit. Oh, for testing, let's keep it at two, and then we can try it out later. So we can get rid of that global variable on the player, uh, the local one. It's not actually needed. Oh. There we go. Um, now, when it comes to the hold key, uh, key hold, timeout, everything, uh, we need to. And if I'm doing this over complicated, um, you know, please let me know in the description. Uh, one of the ways to do this is actually have a local variable here. Um, and I know <laughs> we just removed one. Uh, we'll call this hold um, on conditions uh, here. We're going to. Um, now we're going to add an action here. Hold uh, bool local. Going to drag that in. There we go. Then um, on here, we're going to create uh, an action. Wait. Uh, 0 0.5 and hold and as a condition uh, on these we're going to uh, on these sorry um, so that's on this one so on key up for the normal melee um, we're going to do the hold as well um, local bit of a mess right now there we go um, and it can't be turned on and same here and then we'll copy over this uh, this one to in these conditions as well so let me quickly explain what we did in case it went a bit too fast so basically condition is it needs uh, the player needs to have a pistol um, which I think is kind of fair um, and you don't have to do that that's just my choice um, it needs to have um, the execution rating uh, thing meter whatever um, it's once we hold this for 0 0.25 it's going to turn on hold so that we're actually holding this button um, this one the normal melee cannot work if hold is turned uh, on and um, it's going to only work on key up so um, once we're holding this for 0 0.25, you know, which is nothing um, Hold is going to be turned on when we can't um, You know do it. We can actually literally make this at 0 0.1 if, uh, if we have to um, So basically, you know when we tap it, it's it's not going to uh, going to be working So let's have a look so if we, uh, no, we have to keep the 0 0.25, there we go. So if we tap it, um, it's going to work. Um, you know, it's just going to do melee. If we hold the button, um, it's not going to do this anymore because um, even if we, you know, if we let go, it's not going to work anymore. So basically you really have a short frame where it can tap. Um, and then once we let go, it's going to turn hold back. Um, back to neutral there we go uh, back to neutral it should be back to neutral 
So let's try this out. Um, and the easy way to do that is basically grab uh, this temp. Going to have that to the side. You can drop that here. So when we play, um, hold is neutral, so hold is not turned on. So when we tap, there's no time for hold the hold bool to be turned on because it's too fast. Um, however, if we hold the button for a little bit, the hold is going to be turned on, no longer meeting the condition to perform a normal melee attack. And um, when we let go, um, it's still not going to play the melee attack because hold is still turned off and it's going to be uh, turned on. And it's going to be turned off after 0.5 seconds. I know that's a bit, tiny bit complex. Um, I've tried several other things and they didn't really work. Um, but I might be severely overcomplicating this. I just haven't really um, found another way to do this, but I might be entirely wrong. There we go. So if I tap it, um, it works because the hold button, uh, the hold bull never gets turned on. If I hold this, um, as you can see, it's not going to perform any melee. If I get close enough, and I do realize 1.5 is a bit short or two, whatever. Um, it's going to store him. Um, and yeah, you know, if I still tap, it will still do this. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's working. Um, so what we need to do now is on that enemy, um, we need to make something happen. Um, once we press that, um, you know, hold button, something actually needs to, uh, needs to happen. So uh, let's get uh, started on that. So we're going to go to our character, uh, find his behavior, enemy AI, there we go. Um, and we need something that supersedes, um, just like with melee basically, um, needs to supersede, uh, in this case, everything, except for death, never death. Um, so it needs to supersede um, this, and I don't know why I did selector, it can just be a task. There we go. Let's sort that. Uh, and we don't have to look at the rest. It doesn't matter. Um, all we need to do is have a condition that compares the game object. So game object, um, global variable uh, temp needs to be the same as the invoker. Um, and that's it. So, you know, it, it stores, uh, stores him in the invoker. And then we're going to do some... Um, some actions so for first off um, player cannot be controllable um, pretty straightforward um, we're going to add another bool here bool condition global variable and let's create that and then we need to work that into pretty much everything we've done um, which i know is not <laughs> ideal um, and that is also is controllable and i'm just naming that the same thing um, but basically this is going to make sure that we're blocked from doing any other input except for, you know, jumping, walking, because the incontrollable property only controls that. It doesn't control the fact that we can aim, that we can shoot, that we can open up a menu, for example. So all of that needs to be blocked. Now, and this is going to be something you'll notice that you'll want this built into your game anyway for things like cutscenes, for little intros, transitions, um, you know, you want a quick way to be able to block every input. So this is the way. Um, me naming it the same is just for convenience, nothing else. So it's controllable, it's going to be turned off. Um, then we're going to do a new camera. We haven't created that yet, um, but we can do that straight away as well. We're not going to set it up yet, um, just create it. Camera motor, um, I don't know, take down. Whatever you want to call it, doesn't really matter. There we go. Oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> uh, camera motor takedown. There we go. Um, perfect. So it's going to change to that. Um, and the only way we can change uh, to that one, uh, because it's behavior, is through a global variable. Meaning, yes, we need another global variable. Um, we'll group that into combat as well. And we'll just call this um, camera 
take down. Again, we'll set that up in a bit. Can't just drag it in, uh, it won't work. No, okay. Um, we'll set that up in a bit. So we're going to um, do another change camera then, change from variable, uh, camera takedown. Um, we'll do a, a tiny transition, just tiny. Maybe this is already too much, but we'll see in a bit. Um, then um, we have to teleport the NPC um, in a position in front of the player. Um, I'm not really entirely sure yet um, how much that distance uh, is going to be. I think it's going to be the kind of default 0. Um, 0 0.1, uh, 1.5 uh, for a lot of these, but or 1, so we'll have a look. Um, and that is going to be um, uh, marker takedown, which yes, we still need to set up as well. There we go, marker takedown, game object, combat as well. There we go. And that's where we're going to teleport the NPC to. I don't want to teleport the player, that's just going to create messes. Um, I'd rather avoid uh, avoid doing that, so I'd rather teleport the uh, the NPC. And yes, you know that will create a small mess, um, but you won't see that because of the camera action we're doing, which is great. I'm going to do a small wait to break all of this up, so 0 0.01, um, that's fine. Um, we can do a small like shake, um, sustain. We'll do a shake. Um, just you know for some uh, dramatic effect don't want it to be too heavy there we go um, origin needs to be around the player by the way there we go then um, we're going to play the melee clip and I'm not sure if I imported that um, but I'll put the link in the description um, it's uh, it's play uh, melee and I, it seems like I haven't imported it so we can do that uh, straight now so here we are on the hub and we're going to look up play action play melee clip and we're going to download that which I've already done so many times and we're going to open that um, in our project and import. There we go. So um, we're going to do a play so action play melee clip. Um, the order in which this happens doesn't really matter. So if it's either first the invoker, um, so let's do uh, invoker is the victim in this case, um, and player is the uh, attacker. Um, but yes, this would also work for, uh, the other way around. By the way, in case you're curious, um, you know you can also have um, enemies perform actions on the player like this. Um, then we're going to wait for the duration of that clip and that was 1.667 so we'll just do 1.7 cool then um, we're going to turn off uh, turn back on all of the properties so um, is controllable um, the bool for controllable I'm just going to copy that it's a bit faster then uh, we're going to change camera. This time we're not going to do that from global variable. We're just going to do the main camera motor. Um, also 0 0.5. And we're going to um, stop that shake. Um, stop shake um, and fade time. Pretty short. Maybe this is even too long, but we'll, uh, we'll try. Um, and yeah, so then we'll need to decide what we're going to do with the enemy, but let's just first check if all of this actually works, if it actually plays, um, if it does all of that. Now, in order to test that first off, we need to add, uh, make sure that this camera motor is set as the main camera motor. Um, and that uh, takedown, so trigger, uh, on start, actions, game object global variable camera takedown invoker so that's step one and then in front of the player um, we need to add that marker 
so um, game creator uh, no not actions apologies game creator uh, other marker there we go in this case it needs to be 180 and yeah I'm not sure let's start off with um, oh sorry zero um, let's start off with one so let's just have it be one in front of the player maybe that's too close and then we'll just try the 1.5 um, so we have one that's all good and uh, now in order to make sure this is seen as a game object in every single way um, needs to become a trigger and then um, we can add a trigger on start actions uh, do the same thing so game object variable game object and we're going to store this in marker takedown um, invoker as well and yeah that's pretty much it um, for this now the only problem we all have is that um, as you can see with a lot of these animations once you see them in action looks really cool you know they touch each other uh, on the arms on the head you know they come up real close now the problem with that is colliders colliders will prevent this from actually happening and that's kind of a big issue now in this case with the npcs we actually um have their uh, colliders um set up with puppet master so we can't simply just disable a general collider like with normal game creator characters on the npcs now we can still do that with the player so we're going to go to our clip um, and it doesn't really matter on which one so on execute um, because they play at the same time so we're going to do uh, component um, and we'll, we'll press uh, enable on the player there we go uh, character controller now this is actual um, object on the player so this component on the player which is this one character controller um, is our collider on the player as well so um, that's what we need to turn off so um, yeah let's turn it off let's do wait three seconds uh, no, uh, 1.7 seconds, apologies. Um, and then we're going to turn that back on. And that's it. So that way we know the colliders aren't in the way. Now, the last thing is the camera uh, for the takedown. And um, there are so many ways to do this. I'm actually going to have this... Um, we're going to try something out. So basically, we'll try... Um, no... Orbital, or orbital input, uh, no allow zoom, um, no auto position re behind. Um, yeah, I don't know if this matters. Not sure actually. Um, the initial zoom is going to be 1.5, something like that. Uh, 0 0.5 and then 1.7. We'll try this. So basically it's going to be locked on the player just as uh, just the same. We could actually have this lock on the weapon as well if we really want to, if you want to make it a bit more dynamic, but you know, we'll try it from here. Um, anyway, so we have it like this. Um, this might not look the prettiest and we, we can adjust it. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be an adventure camera in this case as well. Then, um, then we've got most things actually pretty well set up. Um, I don't think there's a lot left here, um, except for making sure this actually looks acceptable. Um, so yeah, let's let's give this a go. Let's try this out. Cool. So let's just make sure that um, the X button still works normally. Cool. And then we're going to get up close and we're going to hold that button. And that works i think that's pretty good i think the camera placement could be better um, and the problem obviously is the npc getting back up but the execution is good i think the distance is good let's he needs to uh st <laughs> stay there not get back up um uh, quite important and um you know we'll need some blood effects things like that but yeah i think we we we're doing pretty well 
Uh, not bad at all. Um, cool. So um, let's fine tune this. Now the other thing we need to do is that is controllable bool property. So we need to make sure that um, basically it needs to be copied everywhere. <laughs> so no matter what we do, um, all of these conditions need that bool. So um, bool uh, global variable is controllable needs to be turned on on literally every single action uh, condition we've made. And I know that's a lot and I do appreciate that. Um, but it's not just for this. You'll see when you want to create cutscenes, um, you know, any type of cinematic really um, that, um, you know, this is going to be, um, you know, quite necessary. So yeah, basically just copy it everywhere. So every single condition that is related to combat, so not on start conditions, but any type of condition that is related to player input. So opening up menus, zooming, all of that stuff, um, it needs this condition. And again, I know that we're doing this now just for the takedown, um, but this is something you'll you'll need for, um, you know, li literally any type of cinematic or whatsoever as well. So yeah, quite important. Um, so, um, you know, start copy pasting and I'll see you in a bit. Cool. So now that that's done, um, let's have a look. So I'm actually going to change, my, uh, change something here. Um, just um, to limit uh, a tiny bit, um, you know, the amount of actions on one. So I'm going to copy this over. This is not necessary. It just looks a bit cleaner. Um, so that's the attacker. That's the player clip. Um, and we need to do something here as well. So like I said, we have, um, you know, the enemy is going to be, um, needs to stay down. He, <laughs> he shouldn't be getting back up. Um, so the important thing is on execute, we need to have a look at exactly how long this clip is. So uh, 1.667, let's stop playing. And he's on the floor like that. Now the exact placement on the floor is a bit less relevant due to our camera action. So if, the, if it doesn't sync up exactly, that'll be fine. It's not the biggest deal. Cool. Um, so we can have a have a play with that. So um, we're going to try some stuff out. So let's say wait. Um, I don't know. One point uh, six. So that's a bit shorter. And then uh, state. And we can just do a clip. We don't need to create anything else. Um, invoker. Um, animation clip and hopefully invoker will work. I'm not entirely sure, but hopefully. Um, and then we're going to do animation clip. We're going to put layer three. So the highest possible layer, um, just to make sure this is all uh, done correctly. And then we need to find a clip that, you know, where he's basically just lying on the ground. Um, and that's where we transition into. And then we're going to, um, once that's done, we're going to um, take away all of his health as well. And that way, um, you know, the behavior will stop too. So let's have a look at those animations. We could actually um, try something else instead. Um, we could just try with Puppet Master. Let's actually give that a go. I've, I didn't consider that, um, but we could actually try that. So let's have a look um, on the character. Uh, behaviors. Yeah, let's actually just take away his health instead. Let's just try that. Where obviously there should be some benefits of using Puppet Master, so let's uh, let's try that. Um, attribute um, invoker health um, subtract one hundred. Let's just see if that um, if that does the trick. Let's uh, let's hope for the best. I'm going to turn transition out off as well. There we go. Let's let's try that. Um, let's give that a go. There we go. Um, so let's try. It's not the prettiest. <laughs> uh, it's definitely not, but uh, I guess that works. 
Um, now, I am a big... Ah, of course. So, the entire behavior tree... Um, the entire behavior tree stopped. So, um, it didn't get a chance to finish these tasks. And that's why we're um, still, do <laughs> still doing this. Um, which looks ridiculous, of course. Um, so, we'll fix that. Um, but yeah, that was fine. Um, so, let's do um, something else instead. Um, really easy fix. At least that helped. That was good. Yeah, that's not going to work. So, we'll just do it in the behavior. We can get rid of this. We'll keep some of the, the weight for now uh, for the timing of the blood splat, of course, and the shot. Um, so, let's go to the behavior editor. And then, um, yeah, we'll need to do 1.6 here. Yeah, and like this, that should, that should work. Let's give that a go. Cool, so let's have a look. And not the prettiest, uh, but it'll do. It'll do. Cool. So then uh, the next step um, is going to add, um, you know, is adding that um, muzzle flash. Um, so instantiate from pool. Um, and we'll need to do that twice, pretty much. Um, and we can get the timing pretty decently um, if we preview it on uh, the character. So we'll drop in the player. Yeah, so it needs to happen about here. So that's 0 0.7. Yeah, 0 0.7, about that, cool. So 0 0.7. Um, and then we need to instantiate uh, a muzzle flash and we need to instantiate uh, blood. So um, when we go to crypto VFX, Crypto, where are you? Crypto VFX, there we go. Um, invoker. And yeah, th this will definitely <laughs> need to mess around a bit. Um, but we can, uh, we can try that. So... Um, muzzle flashes, prefabs, um, I think it was four, I don't know, we'll, we'll try four. Yeah, four is fine. You know what, we'll actually create a duplicate here, just to be sure, because pool obviously does affect um, the muzzle flash, so we'll create a duplicate. Um, so we'll do muzzle flash 4, let's keep that open, and blood splatter 4 I think is the default one we use as well, so that's fine. So um, let's go back to our clip, um, and we'll select... We'll select, uh, where is it, uh, victim, 4.1, there we go. And then uh, prefabs here, um, block four as well, and I should have done this sooner, it's stupid of me, apologies. And 
and we'll drag in four as well. And the reason I'm doing this is because, um, you know, a front pool actually does um, affect um, the prefab. So, you know, um, there's some impacts. So that's why I created duplicates. Um, next thing, um, we need to do placements. And one of the easy ways to basically do this is um, grab four, place it on the player. Um, there we go. So it needs to be... Well, that's something we'll need to figure out. Um, four, and let's do the... Uh, impacts as well, muzzle flashes. There we go. I'm not sure if turning this on does much. No, I don't think so. Um, but we can at least play it with this one. And then we're going to go to the clip. Um, we're going to turn this on and we'll be about here. I think clicking away, yeah, and unfortunately it does that. Cool, so something needs to happen. Um, basically here. So I'm not sure if this is going to work actually, but let's, no, it's not going to work. Okay. So yeah, they need to be placed um, about here by the head. And the problem is, is once we do this, you know, that will happen. Um, so we'll, we'll just give this a go, something like, here so 1.62 662 let's try that out let's uh let's see what the effect is and you know you might need to uh mess around with the placement a tiny bit just to make it look prettier There we go. So let's have a look. That was pretty good. That was actually not bad at all. Awesome. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So now, um, you know, his behavior will have um, stopped. Um, so, you know, that's just, uh, um, just like, um, you know, when we shoot him in the head, for example, straight away. So not, not much changes there. Um, but we do, uh, you know, a coordinated, uh, a um, synced attack uh, of two melees, uh, two animation clips, and we have the instant takedown, and it's all good. Now, the only last tiny little thing that's left um, is having that um, takedown meter, and we're going to keep that simple, um, but we do need it to be visual um, on the player. So, what we're going to do is um, once this plays. Um, so it actually plays. Um, we're going to remove the attribute. So we can't do that on the input because um, you need to make sure it actually is playing. Um, subtract um, 100. There we go. Um, and, you know, we'll have it build up that it can only go to, uh, you know, you can only do it once until it's built up. Then let's have a look at um, the canvas uh, UI. There we go. Um, we're going to do something simple here. So let's um, duplicate um, stamina. There we go. We'll call this uh, execute. Then the important thing is that you select all three of, um, oh, um, you resize, sorry, all three of them, so 50. For example, how big is um, ammo? 250. 
Okay, we'll do two. Fi oh, we'll do two fifty then. Uh, two fifty. Okay, that doesn't work. The scaling must be different. That's annoying. I'll just place it here and we'll just do one by one. That's okay. Perfect. Um, we c I think we can just copy components. Nah, we'll just do it like this. Just Let's just avoid any issues. Um, no, it's a bit of manual work, but that's fine. Cool, and let's say five high. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Um, then the only thing we need to make sure is we're using this um, this bar. Um, we need to use a water, another one that is quite simply um, white, for example. There we go. Perfect. Um, let's make sure that it reflects the proper attribute. So execute and here execute as well. There we go. Um, the background is still going to be transparent. So yeah, we're good there. Once it's full. Um, sweet. Yeah, that's good enough. I mean, you can visually make it prettier. And then let's make sure that we have uh, another trigger here. Uh, I'm just going to do the separate because it's become otherwise it's become quite messy. Um, let's do a trigger. Um, regen X. There we go. Attribute change player execute uh, on decrease. Um, we're going to regen this. Um, attributes, execute, um, is less or equal than 100. Let's make sure it stops the actions then. Add, and then the rate, you know, that's... Uh, That's up to this, then call conditions, uh, these conditions. And of course, um, we should have done actions here. Apologies. There we go. Call conditions. And this should just be on change. And then restart. There we go. Um, how fast this regenerates is completely up to you. Um, you know, you can uh, check that for yourself. Um, and yeah, let's make sure this works. Um, what I'm going to do in order to quickly test um, that we can't accidentally do it twice, um, I'm going to uh, duplicate him once more and just put him here. There we go. Let's try this out. So, um, execute. It plays and then it's going to be uh, recharging. It does the recharge um, not so <laughs> not so smoothly. So let's have a quick look. Because yeah, something is causing that, and I think it's that we the fact that we call these conditions yet again. Um, so let's just do something like this. Because we already have to restart actions. We don't need to do that. There we go, so let's try this out. Sweet. And it it generates a bit slow, I'm fully aware. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it does nothing. Now, however, we don't have that bar, so now we're just going to be meleeing him and he's, you know, he's shooting us. Um, but yeah, pretty cool stuff. Um, so that's how we can do the, the takedowns. Uh, it's a different type of approach than I did in the Brawler series. Um, but the nice advantage we have here is because we have that third-person shooter camera um, We can use some camera trickery to make things really smooth um, and you know looking pretty good 
So that's it for this video. Um, I'll be uploading the project to Patreon uh, shortly. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.